We have been accosted in America by the news media, the newspaper, internet, uh, television, radio, by the crimes and the trials of serial rapists and killers. One of the men's name is John Evander Cooey from Florida, who murdered nine-year-old Jessica Lunsford. After kidnapping her from her home in the middle of the night, he took her to his trailer where he repeatedly raped her. And then he took the little child, the little nine-year-old, and buried the child sitting up alive. When I heard that, I cried watching it because they showed a picture of Jessica. And um, see, I've got kids. And I don't know how you respond to situations like that, but I see my child sitting in a grave as the dirt's being piled on top of them. In the flurry of all of this, Jessica's mother made this statement. He took her life. He will pay. He will pay. Jessica's father is quoted as saying, I hope you rot in Hell. Then we had Joseph Edward Duncan III who went into a house on May the 16th, took a hammer and bludgeoned three people to death and then took the two small children, Shasta, age eight, and Dylan, age nine, threw them into his pickup truck, took them out, repeatedly raped Dylan, molested his family, eventually killing Dylan by the grace of God, she was found at a Denny's with Duncan. A waitress had enough nerve to call 911, and she was spared, I'm sure, of death. He was the binding, the torturing, and the killing mass murderer, self-appointed. He went into the Otero family's house years ago, killed the father, the mother, one of the brothers, left him in a pool of blood, and then took the little girl down into the basement. And she said, what's going to happen to me after she saw her whole family murdered? And he said, tonight you're going to heaven. Took her, strung her up, hung her, and then afterward committed a sexual act that I cannot repeat from this pulpit. One of raiders, one of the BTK victims, family members said this, there will be no justice until Dennis Rader rots in hell. Another individual said, he'll never have any warm, loving human contact again for the remainder of his twisted existence. While your wretched soul awaits pronouncement of the one true justice, which is your damnation to hell for eternity. You look at these people and you say, well, they deserve to rot in hell. And, um, I tend to agree with you, and they will be judged. But so will you. The reason these people exist today is because there is no fear of God before their eyes. And I say this to those of you that are listening at home and those of you that peddle your gospel to pretty little people. You pamper them. You don't want to offend them. And you never speak on the fear of God. Like it or lump it. There is a being over all. And he's taking notes. He's jotting down everything that you do. And at the end of your life, you will be held accountable for it. 2 Corinthians 5.10, For we must all be appear before the judgment seat of Christ, for everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that which he has done, whether it be good or bad. Revelation 21.8 says this, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Buddhists, Muslims, Hindus, it makes no difference your religious affiliation. You will stand before my Jesus. 
Without exception, everyone within the sound of my voice will one day face the judgment of God. Everyone say judgment of God. One day, my friend, your name will be called, your ticket will be punched, a warrant will be issued for your arrest, your time will come, the test will be over, you'll be ordered to put your pencil down, turn your exam paper over, and put your hands on your desk. As sure as the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, you will face a judgment of God. As sure as one and one is two, you will face a judgment of God. As certain as death comes to every believer and every human being, you will face the judgment of God as sure as water is wet and fire is hot you will face the judgment of God wherever you exist in life right now friend it is temporal oh justice will reign all the evidence will be in God is keeping a record. Both sides of the story will be known. Every hideous sin will be revealed. Every murderous thought will be known. Every perverted sexual act will be screamed out in the courtroom of God. All lying, stealing, cheating, fornication, adultery, hate, idolatrous act, covetous desire, wagging tongue, every act of slander, and the list goes on and on. In order to be found clean on judgment day up there, you got to be washed in the blood down here. For the judge to pronounce you not guilty up there, you got to get justified down here. That means someone steps in, Jesus Christ washes you with his blood, and it's just if you'd never sinned. <laughs> Romans 5, 9, being now justified by his blood, we are saved from the wrath. Someone say, thank you, Jesus. The church in Corinth, 1 Corinthians 6, 11, but you are washed, you are sanctified, you are justified. Acts 4, 12, there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The appointment's been set. Your day is coming. I'm warning you, if you don't cast yourself before him down here, you'll be cast into hell up there. If you don't cry for mercy on your day of salvation down here, you'll cry in horror on the day of judgment up there, and there will be hell to pay.